when Warren talks about other gurus, I can't help laughing. It's beyond me to understand why people get stuck up with them. It's really beyond me. Because it is so obvious that God cannot be bought. You cannot pay for God. It's absolutely obvious. For any intelligent man, it should be obvious. How much did you pay to become a human being? from, say, monkeys? Or what did we do? Did we cut our tails or anything to become human beings? We have become by the grace of God. What can we pay for the grace of God? It's very simple. You cannot. God doesn't understand money. It's human being have who have created money and all these things and economic wants and all this economic problem. God doesn't understand any economics that you have made. He doesn't understand. This is all your own doings, your own projections and complications and you are entangled into it. It is as simple as that. And when you see these people, who live on other people's money, I call it opium or parasites. You won't live on other people's money, will you, any one of you? So they do not even have a simple self-respect. Not only that, but these parasites are thriving. It's so obvious, so very obvious that we like be fooling. The more one is able to be foolish, the better we are. I went to Calcutta once for a program and I had many programs, but one of them was in a very posh place, as they call it, in a hotel they arranged a program. I said, this hotel people, you see, these rich people, they will not be interested in such, but they are a bit too rich from all over the world. Overly rich people can never understand this, see. They want somebody who will take money from them and they can show off their money. And we had a program and there were two halls. I told them, take a very small one because I know them too well. And the bigger hall was occupied by another fellow who was with some sort of a show on stuff. And we were amazed that except for two people, most of them who came inside went to his pro. And after eight days he was arrested in Pune for robbing people. But all of them went to his program and not to mine, when it was written, not a single pie will be charged and it's all free and all those things. And he looked so dishonest from his own photograph, if you could see that, was so dishonest to look at. And people could not see that. I mean, it was so simple to see. See, that shows that you have lost every sensitivity to know what is plastic and what is real. It makes me laugh sometimes the way, today only I was discussing in the aeroplane with somebody who was seriously telling me how much he was tortured by another group where he paid 3,000 pounds just to get some sort of a horrible mantra which has no meaning. And where he worked very hard for days together and he broke his back and he broke his every part of his bone in the <laughs> backbone area and all sorts of things he did and I mean, he became so nervous, a recluse. They are even frightened of a garlic if they see one garlic. I mean, after getting realization, you have to be a person who is absolutely powerful, in control of yourself, not aggressive, but not to be such a cowardly recluses. And he told me all these things and I didn't know what to do because it was such a, such a description. They don't know whether to laugh or to cry, really. Because 
thing behind it is all hocus pocus, absolutely hocus pocus. I think this word must have started after the fake have come on this world. Absolutely absurd it is to say that you'll fly or uh, you will see the light and all this nonsense. And on top of that, the suffering of the person, of a person who is a genuine seeker, who is a seeker of the truth, he is the man of God and he is being tortured like this, you see, makes you so unhappy. You just don't know what to say about the whole thing that's happening. You have to wake up to your self-esteem and know that you are created human beings for a special thing and not to be bounced and cheated by these horrible fake people. One has to understand the innate nature of God, to understand what should happen to you as realized souls. If you become abnormal and freaky, then it is not that you have got your realization. On the contrary, a person who is realized becomes extremely normal. He is the most normal person. Apart from these things, there are some reasons built in within us which makes us so stupid, really built in, I should say, because we have come from matter. We are gross. Our origin has been gross. We came from matter and we grew up to see that there is something beyond the matter that is the spirit and we are the spirit. But we get dominated by this matter. We really get dominated by matter all through in our ventures. For example, if you are sitting in a chair, for example, you make a chair out of some matter, you cannot sit on the ground. You form a habit of matter. Matter starts growing on you. You become such a slave, such a slave of matter that you cannot get over it. Any matter you start using, for example, you use a car, then you cannot do without a car. You use electricity, which is a material power. If it fails, everything goes out. You cannot do without it. So matter is all the time trying to overpower the spirit. But the beauty is through your evolution, you evolve to a stage where you are a human being and you start seeing the matter cannot dominate your spirit. This should be the self-estimation. There should be understanding that you are the spirit and not the matter. When you see this simple point, then you understand that you cannot purchase God. Then another point also one understands that it is not the way materially you say somebody you should accept. But spiritually, if he does something spiritually to you, then you should accept. For example, see in the light. Say, they say, you see the light. Why well, I see the light myself? Yeah. But to see the light, I have to be away from the light. Do you see the point? You have to be the light. So it's a very simple thing if you understand, it's common sense, that if you have to be the light, then you have to be inside the light, part and parcel of the light. But to see the light you have to go further. Actually from this distance I can't even see. If I have to really see the light I have to go much further to see this light. All these things that they are talking, I'm telling you, it's such a camouflage and they have been very good at befooling you. It is impossible to convince people who want to be befooled. It's impossible. It is easy to befool them because they are anxious to be befooled, so all right. But those who want that they should really realize it, they should get it. Then the attitude is very different, they would like to go and see what the disciples have got. 
These people who have paid so much money, they have been people for 15 years, 20 years, go and see them. What have you got? If they say, all right, I'm feeling very much better in health, you look at the face and you will know they are not. Supposing they fail, I, I feel relaxed. So what? What is so great for feeling relaxed, so-called relaxation? You can feel relaxed even with a dope. Even going to a pub you might feel relaxed, in some company you might feel relaxed. So what? What is so great? Is that something God's work? Just to relax you? Some people say, I feel better. This might be ego pampering. But what powers did you get yourself? If you become the Spirit, then you have to have powers of the Spirit flowing through you, isn't it? It should be a common, logical conclusion. What is the power you have got? What have I got from that? They have taken all my purse, my money, thousands of pounds have gone to him, everything done. What did I get from him? We should have a, an understanding. But this nobody asks because there's a big mafia in all these organizations. You are not supposed to discuss, you are not supposed to talk. You are put into different compartments, it's a big secret going on. If you tell some Indian, he'll just laugh because he knows the meanings of these words are so stupid. Some of the words of the mantras means this, showing this. Some of the words means scorpion. Some of them means the uh, serpent, all kinds of things. And some of them means the siren. In a very ridiculous way, these people have befooled you. A sort of a respite they have taken, I think. Or is it the respite of the satanic on the divine people who have come on this earth to seek God? Is that the attack of these negative people who are trying to defile you completely and ruin your images on this earth? You have to be aware of that. You are very vulnerable because you are seeking. You are more vulnerable because you have no self-esteem. You treat yourself so cheaply. You do not judge into what lion's den you are entering into and you get so badly hurt. With all your sincerity, with all that, you do not give a second thought to think that even if there are thousands of them going, before I going there, I should find out what sort of a nonsense is going on there. If you go there as an ordinary visitor, you will immediately find out that this is a fake and a false thing. You are warned in the Bible. It has been warned that there will be fake and false people coming on this earth. Now there are another type of people also. I will cover the chakras later a little because giving a little introduction to the subject about how to avoid these things. Who are bound by ritualistic ideas, as he said about Christianity, of giving very subtle forms of things. But we must see what it is doing. Like Church of England, can you imagine, Church of England owns the whole of Soho. And the question was raised, how can you own this Soho where all the prostitutes are earning their livings? The answer came in that Christ looked after Mari Magdalini who was a prostitute, see. You can see. And the people accepted this answer. Then the whole thing of a ritual starts, you see, come along here and sit down and bring the child and we baptize. It's a joke. It's a very big joke. Baptism is a living process within you. It's a living happening. Did Christ baptize any one of them? 
Did he put his hand on anybody's head and say, you are baptized by me? Ask the question, did he do it? Now how are these people doing it? They have taken Christ into their hands as if they found him somewhere in the stone, somewhere. What right have they got to say that they are baptizing? It's a living force of God which resides within you. He said that I'll appear before you like tongues of flames. Let them explain this point only. Then they'll say, He is the Alpha and the Omega. What does that mean? For all practical purposes, what does that mean to you? For that, you have to read Devi Bhagavat. What was Christ? Who is He? How He is Alpha and He is Omega? What, why He came on this earth really? What was His purpose? It's nothing there, just some few people who are not realized saw Him and wrote it down, finished. How can that become such an authority for anyone whatsoever that you are fighting? It's very deep. It's because it is so narrow, it is extremely deep. You have to widen it to see. For example, you are standing on a well which is very narrow and just hardly can see anything inside. You just see something flickering. To see the complete vision of that well, you have to increase the narrowness of it. And that is we are not prepared to do because, you see, Bible is the last word. Now, I would say any other person would come and say, what is the authority of Bible? Now, what authority will you give? If you say Christ is the authority of Bible, take it like that. Christ never wrote Bible. He never wrote a word. So how do you connect? Could be some journalist who could have written about him. Could be anything absurd. If the Hindus say the Gita, ask them who wrote Gita. Krishna never wrote Gita. Never. Did he write it? So what is the authority of it? Nothing. Gita has no authority as such. How do you say that Gita was the one written by Krishna? He, it has nothing to do. Anybody, supposing you see me today and you write about me, you can write anything. Anything you feel like. Like a journalist came just to sort of find faults with me. She was paid by some fake guru. And she wrote that I eat betel nuts, which I have never eaten all my life. <laughs> I wish I could, because that pleases some people. But I never eat. I mean, I should have eaten, but I never eat. And she said that she eats betel nut. I don't know from which angle she saw me eating betel nuts. <laughs> if she had written Bible about me, it would have been something funny. Then that is not the authority either. Moreover, they did not have tape recorders to tape anybody's lectures or anything. Even his photograph was not there. That is today all these things are available. So what is the authority? This is the problem with us is that we accept certain things as an authority because we think we can control people by this misappropriation of authority to ourselves. And there have been people who said, I am the Christ. I said, all right, walk on the, walk on the water. First sign of Christ is he will walk on the water because he is Omkara itself, he is Omkara. He can walk on, he has no body as such, he can walk on the water. All right, walk on the water. And first step will may be in the water, the second will go down. All such hocus pocus could be found out. If somebody says that I, you give me money, I'll make you fly, put him on this leaning tower of Pisa. What is it meant for? After all, it must be used also sometimes. And throw him down, see how far he goes with flying. Have a nice show for him. That's how you can find out these people, whether it happens or not. So this is how I find in this country also, invasion of negativity of these people who are here to spoil your chances of realization. And it's very difficult to give realization to people who have, been, who have been to these people, have been initiated, have been really spoiled in their Kundalini, is rather difficult. 
I have worked day in and day out to neutralize it. And I've been working. But the interest in yourself will only come when you will have self-esteem. That is very important. And that is the center of which should be jumping. This center. I came up to the heart chakra the other day, and now today I'm going to talk to you about the Vishuddhi. Vishuddhi is this center placed at the back, backbone here, which has given a human being a speciality which separates him from animals that he raised his head upward. By raising his head upward, he has been able to create a new dimension for his brain. And this new dimension is a dimension by which he creates ego within himself. Before becoming a human being, I hope you can see all of you. Can I come move this? Before becoming a human being, your brain was flat and all covered with the super ego at the most, like dogs or you can say the horses, they have this super ego. And when you became human being, a locking system took place by which you started developing, or you can say a twist took place by which you started developing your action. For example, an animal does not know how to make a chair out of wood in action. Physically, at the most it might carry this chair which is made, put it there and mimic you, sit on that. But it cannot make anything with its hand. Maybe it can weave a small little nest or something like that for it to live at the most. So you, with your action, can overpower the matter. You have been able to achieve great heights in overpowering all the five elements by using them as power for your everyday use also, like electricity, magnetism, sound, everything, ether. But animals, when they come in contact with human beings, they also can be conditioned as far as their understanding of relationship with human beings is concerned, but not that they could be made to act in, onto some matter. And this action, the physical action, has given a byproduct which is called as ego. This is the beginning. Then the second action is the thinking. The animal doesn't think of the future. He doesn't have any insurances. Animal is not bothered about insurance, or what will happen to my great-grandchildren when I die, what part of my house will be going to which of my… which children. He's not bothered about all these things. And he does not even have such a sense of possession as human beings have. So, it so happens that we start developing our ego when we start planning for the future, thinking of the future, going in the future, and also when we use our physical being to create something or to do any physical work. If an animal goes and attacks a cow or something, say a tiger, and brings it home, for his family, he is not proud, he is not egoistical like human beings are. While human beings, if they earn about, say, five hundred dollars, they become very egoistical. They think we have earned such a lot of money 
and we have done so much, we have every right to dominate the wife and vice versa. But an animal doesn't think that he has a right to dominate. See, whatever he does in the nature of his own personality, he doesn't do it as an idea that he has to do this and he is very important, I think he has the, he doesn't have that ego. So he does not even think that this is karmas, that I have to face for it and I have done something wrong, I have killed a cow, so I must go to a Brahmin and pay him a lot of money because I have done such a sin. These ideas do not come into the heads of an animal because he is not used to that dimension, a new dimension of karmas to which human beings are because of these two creations. Because of ego you feel you have done bad karmas or good karmas. If you had no ego you would never have felt that. These two things starts at this point, as you see it very clearly, should start from there, but is put down there. Actually, th these start maneuvering from these two po this point. And you start developing ego and superego in your head, and you develop a triangular brain, a prism-like brain. And when such a brain has developed, then a new problem starts that through this prism, Whatever energy passes into it, most of it goes out according to the parallelogram of forces. That I have no time just now to tell you. Because of that your attention is all the time outside. You can only do something outside. You cannot take your attention inside. Now supposing I say you put your attention inside because you have to go inside, you cannot do it. You just can't do it. Your attention is always outside, I have to do this, I have to go there, I have to get it, but you cannot put your attention inside, that's not possible. I cannot just order you that you put your attention inside. Some happening has to take place within you. Supposing something suddenly falls off, then your attention goes there. In the same way, when the happening of the Kundalini awakening takes place, then your attention goes to that which is awakened there you start just seeing the awakening or you can say the feeling the awakening. But it is such a quick thing, split of a second, that sometimes you miss everything except that you see the cool breeze has started flowing through. Sometimes you do feel it's here, it's here. So many people feel that way also. It's come up now, it is here throbbing, now it's all right, it has started broken. It depends on what sort of a runaway you have. If the runaway is horrid, then you see, you go on feeling all the bumps and the dumps and everything. Sometimes the runaways are so badly spoiled that it takes sometimes months for the Kundalini to rise. But now I think in Sahaja Yoga we have developed such methods and techniques of such permutations and combinations that nowadays it's much easier to raise the Kundalini than it was about, say, ten years back, when I had two hundred, uh, I had about twenty disciples with whom I worked for two years to give them realization. In London I had six disciples, for four years I worked on them <laughs> to give them realization. But today we have thousands in UK and we have lots of them in Sydney also and in India also we have thousands, where they just get it in a second. But it's a different thing now because it has evolved so well. But this happening is a living happening. This you cannot do. You can jump, you can stand on your heads, take out your clothes, wear some badges, wear some clothes, you can do all that. But you cannot make the Kundalini rise in the sense you see the pulsation there at the triangular bone. You see the pulsation of the Kundalini there, actual pulsation. You can see the rising of the Kundalini. You see it. You also feel the cool breeze rising. You can also with the stethoscope feel the sound, lap, 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 lap. Coming up to here, which Kabira has very clearly said, shunya shikhara para anahada bhajire. At the apex of the shunya shikhara, zero apex of your head, you hear first the anahata. Anahata is this sound of the heart without percussion. And that is how you feel the kundalini and then it breaks through, you feel it actually on your fingers. It's an actualization of the experience. This is what baptism is. When Warren Reeves said that 
you never had your real baptism, do not be angry with him, because it's a fact. You have not got your realization. Christ has said that you are to be born again hundred times, he said. So now they have started saying we are born again. It's again self-certification. First of all it was baptism. Nowadays there's another thing started that we are born again. Now they come and ask these people, they change from one to another. That how is it? Through Christ you have to get through. And you will see only in Sahaja Yoga you will understand that ultimately you have to pass through the gate of Christ only to enter into the kingdom of God. It's a fact. What he said, he never told lies. He told the complete truth, nothing but the truth. But the way you interpret it, the way you understand it is so narrow that you do not want to accept it. This is the gate about which he has talked. And this is the greatest thing he has done to us. Now this Vishuddhi Chakra is the center of Shri Krishna. If I say it is the center of Shri Krishna, you may start doubting me, you should doubt me also, it's not proper, it is not problem with Indians because they know it is the center. They know about centers, they know where Krishna resides. And they know there are sixteen petals to this and that they know that he is called as a complete incarnation of sixteen petals and all that they know. I do not have to quarrel with them. And the center here of Christ is actually a little confusing because he is called as Mahavishnu. In Indian literature he is called as Mahavishnu, not as Christ. And he is also is Baudha, not Buddha but Baudha, which they got a little bit confused in our old scriptures. It's a f difference of language. In one of my lectures on Christ, you'll find out about His origin, why He was called Jesus, why He was called Christ, and what is the origin of these things, why it was derived, who was His mother, and everything you'll find out from that lecture that I have got for you. It is better that you go through that lecture and see for yourself. You have lots of these tapes already in Sydney. They can send it over to you. You can look at it from that angle. I mean, in this small little time, I cannot elaborately talk about Krishna and about Christ. But only thing I have to tell you that there's a very great relationship between both of them. And Christ is the word, comes from the word Krishna. Kist in India means the agriculture and Krishna also come from Krishi, which also means agriculture. Agriculture means the one where you sow and they are the sowers of the seed. They have sown the seed in the fields. So the sowing of the seed is done by Sri Krishna and the Gita that he has described is also another very interesting thing about which we are very much confused. Krishna never wrote Gita, first of all. Then he never was, it was never written by an absolute Brahmin or anything who was a born Brahmin, but was written by an illegitimate child of a fisherwoman. How can he write, a man like that, that you are born as a Brahmin? You are to be born as a Brahmin. What he was meaning, that when you are Bra born as a Brahmin, then you have the aptitude to seek God. For example, you are all Brahmins in his own words. That means you are the seekers of God. All the seekers of God are Brahmins and the seekers of power are Kshatriyas and the seekers of money are Vaishyas. It meant the aptitude, but Hindus as usual have made, like all others have made, a mess of all that philosophy. According to them, you are born a Brahmin. Even if you are the greatest crook of the world, you are a Brahmin. And even if you are a person who is a very highly evolved person, if you are not born in a Brahmin family, then you are good for nothing. This caste system is such a horrible thing in India, which has no explanation at all in the scriptures, because in 
It is written that in everyone resides the spirit. There is spirit in every one of you. How can you have caste system? You can have aptitudes. But as usual, people have escapes of everything. This point that everybody has the spirit within yourself. Gita has described it, that everyone has the spirit within. But one has to know when he says there is spirit within you, that means he is meaning the human beings have the spirit, not the devils. Because Krishna himself has killed so many devils in his lifetime. His one of the powers was Samharaka, means killing. He used to kill so many devils, so there are devils also. On this principle that there is spirit in everybody, why did he kill so many devils? The devils do not have spirit in them. They are devils and devils and devils. For example, say Hitler, if he comes to ask for a realization, do you think he can get it or he should get it? His, his greatest reward would be a rigorous imprisonment into hell for all his lives to come. Huh? How, how can you be so sure that he wasn't Krishna casting out devils, more devils? He was not. How can you be so sure that Hitler was not Krishna casting out devils? <laughs> For that you must get your realization. That's why. You see, the surety only will come when you become your absolute. Just now you cannot be sure. For example, I'll tell you, when you get your realization, you get your vibrations, all right? Now, with these vibrations, you can find out what is true, what is not true. Now, you may say, this may be all a myth. For example, we had some Brahmins in one of the programs I had first arranged, and they, I didn't know they had a fight with these organizers, but they said, she's not a Brahmin, how can you have a program here or something like that? And they were sitting in front row. I didn't know they had a quarrel. I just asked them, I said, uh, who is Brahmin among you? Who thinks he is a Brahmin? Just come forward. So five, six of them, you see, like great wrestlers came and sat before me. I said, all right, please be seated. Very arrogant. I said, sit down. I said, put your hands towards me like this. And they started shaking their hands. They got a little frightened. I said, why are you shaking? He said, because we are Brahmins and you are the power, that's why we are shaking. I said, see, your neighbors, they are also shaking. Yes, yes, they are also shaking. They may also Brahmins. I said, please ask them, what are they? They asked some people, they said, these are the people who have come from the lunatic asylum. These were the only two people who were shaking there. I said, now relatively you can see now, that when you thought you were a Brahmin, you are mad too, to believe into such a thing. Now to believe that Hitler was also good, is a typical sign of escaping in life horrible things. This, you see, just to have an idea that everything is fine is the best way of jumping into the devil's den. And that's what has happened with people, that they never doubted anyone. And I don't know from where do people get these ideas in everybody's life, even Christ, he took a hunter in his hand and he was whipping all the people. He was love, he was compassion, no doubt, but he did whip them. He also said that don't throw pearls before the swine. His compassion had a special purpose, which I will tell you just now, what, why he got himself crucified also, which is a very important thing. But when we just say that everything is fine, everything is good, the reason is we do not want to face the reality. Because perhaps maybe that we cannot understand that there could be anything bad. But after realization you discover that yourself there are problems. Yourself there's something wrong with you. Leave alone others. There are problems within you which you have not seen and faced. Perhaps there are problems within you which you have, don't want to see in others because then you will not be able to justify them. But after realization, you get out of yourself. Like the sari I am wearing, if I am not identified with it, I see a spot, I would like to clean it. I see it, I want to clean it. I don't see it's a good thing to have the spots there. But supposing I am identified, I'll hide it. 
I'll say, oh, there's nothing, nothing wrong, everything is all right. There are evildoers, not one, but so many these days that you have no at all idea. If you had, you would not have lost so much. Is there such thing as a conscious evildoer? Beg pardon? Is there such thing as a conscious evildoer? Would you be able to just leave your questions till the end? Mataji will invite questions at the end. All right. Now, the thing is, whatever happens to us in our consciousness is only limited to our human awareness. Whatever we see in our human awareness, at the time when Krishna came, we got our human awareness. In that, what do we have? Only two points. One is our superego, which is our conditioning. Another is our ego, which we have achieved as a myth that we have done this, I am this, I am that, I like this, you like this. So we are only two things, either superego or ego. We wobble between the two. The third thing which should be within us is our spirit heart in the heart. And for that, the central point is the point by which we balance between these two, between the desire and the action. We go on balancing in the center by understanding what is the best. For example, a person drinks a lot. He kills himself by drinking. His son need not read any book to know that drinking is bad. He knows that it is bad. His father is killed because of drinking. So he, he takes a life which is very much with moderation towards it. You start learning by so many experiences, right and wrong, how to be in the center. That's all you can learn. With human awareness, you can only learn how to be in the center. Now you have to go beyond this human awareness to be the awareness of the Spirit. And when you become the awareness of the Spirit, that you should become, that you should ask for, that should be your goal. When you become that, then the whole picture becomes different. Because you can feel it yourself and understand what is right and wrong on your vibratory awareness, which is a new dimension within you. Even children, say, take ten children who are realized souls. If you ask them what's the matter with another person, they will immediately raise the same finger and say, this is the matter. When you ask the person, have you got a very bad cold, cough or something, bronchitis, you'll say yes. If this hand is shown, that means all the left side, that means he's suffering from emotional trouble. You do not know anything about your chakras at all before realization. One must accept this. One has to accept whatever it is, there's nothing wrong in it. It's only your ego which stops not accepting. And then once you get your realization, you start feeling your different centers. You start feeling it, actually you start feeling it. And you start feeling the centers of others. Anyone who wants to know whether this person is evil or not is only to ask the question and you can feel it. You can't even bear some of the horrible vibrations you get from people. Some of the Sahaja Yogis tries for asking for some devilish people and they got actual blisters, especially Mr. Hitler, whom you are supporting now. Actual blisters on the finger, actual blisters. This is what it is. After realization, your real absolute self comes in because you become the spirit which is in the heart. The spirit resides in the heart, but this is the place of its seat. There are seven seats in the head and the seat of the spirit is here. When the Kundalini goes, it's just a very small thread of Kundalini rises because there are lots of problems and a very small, through the Brahmanadi is the central most uh, channel, it rises and opens this. When it opens it, the grace comes down. And when the grace comes down, you get completely relaxed because it falls on the, both the sides, on the ira and pingala nadi, which are the manifesting our left and right sympathetic nervous system. By which you feel first relaxed, thoughtless. And then when it is a little bit established, you start feeling the cool breeze because your spirit has started manifesting 
and you just feel a cool breeze like a wind coming into you. First you may feel tingling, heat, all that is going out. Sometimes people a little bit shake also because if the nerves are not uh, properly built up, if they do not have the strength to bear it, then it sometimes happens that you shake a little bit, doesn't matter. After some time you start sustaining it. It takes time little, into some people, in some people it doesn't take time at all. It's the quality of your central path of Sushumna is important. If it is very simple, there's no problem, then the Kundalini takes no time. She's anxiously waiting, she's your mother, she's the pure desire within you, the power to become one with your spirit. Unless and until you achieve it, whatever you may try, you do anything you like, you spoil your Sushumna, but you'll have to get it, otherwise your seeking will not be over. You have to reach the place where you should say, I have found it. If you have not found the Spirit, you will never be happy with any sort of thing you do. Anything you do, be kind to yourself, be gracious to yourself and get your Realization. This is a simple thing as a mother I would like to tell you. There is nothing to be done except by getting Realization. But if you are an adamant person and if you are employed by some of the gurus to come here or you are running a lawyer's job for other gurus and all that, you cannot get Realization. I am sorry you cannot get it, I cannot help it. But you have to identify with yourself and see to it that you want to have it, then only you will get it. If you do not have the desire to have it, you will not get it at any cost. You are not to be forced into it. Your freedom is completely respected. If your freedom is not respected, how are you going to enjoy the freedom of your spirit? So it is completely in your hand to be free to accept whether to get Realization or not. Now this chakra of Ishuddhi is very important because there are sixteen subplexuses which are looked after by it. For example, ear, nose, throat, all these things are looked after by the center of Sri Krishna. And this uh, center has got two sides, one is the left, another is the right side. <coughs> I have to talk about it because most of the people in the West somehow suffer from the left issue, they. One of them is the reason maybe smoking, right is more affected by smoking but later on it goes to the left also. But I think the more important is that you people have developed a theory, I don't know how, that you have to be guilty for everything. Maybe it is from your childhood, you are brought up this way, don't spoil the carpet, don't spoil that, don't do this and don't do that. Maybe your confessions in the churches, maybe, I don't know what to blame, but it's a very good indulgence for people to sit down and say, oh, I should not have done this, I should not have done that, criticizing yourself and analyzing yourself. This is also a very good escape of egoistical people. They are egoistical, they dominate others and then they sit down and weep on the left Vishuddhi. This left Vishuddhi is a, such a dangerous thing that it creates problems of the worst nature in human beings. For example, if you have, say, any cancerous growth within you and if you have left Vishuddhi, it's going to be difficult to cure you because the escape of the Kundalini has to be through the Vishuddhi Chakra. And the Vishuddhi Chakra on the left-hand side is very important for the escape of all these tensions of the cancer. And if you have this kind of a bad habit of sitting down and indulging into this kind of a nonsensical thing, like sitting down like Lord Byron and reading some sort of a tragedy and making a tragedy out of you, it's a drama going on. What is there to be tragic about you? What, what is wrong with you? You are very rich people, you have everything. Still, why do you want to cry and weep? All the time you are in a crying mood. Why? God has given you so much. Do you ever say that? Count your blessings one by one. How many blessings you have got? You do know. You are especially blessed people, especially in this Australia, I think you are especially blessed. But you want to show that you are extremely miserable. The worst are French in this, I would say. Because when I went to France, they said, Mother, never say that you are a happy person because they'll think you are not sensitive. I said, really? <laughs> you think these French are very, very sensitive people? 
To what? Not to holiness, not to purity. They are sensitive to God knows what. Ten feet you walk and you find a prostitute standing on the road. And about ten feet you walk and you find three alcoholics lying on the street. These are sensitive people. Are they sensitive to their spirit? What are they sensitive to? What are they crying about? This is the very good thing that in the night you drink a lot, sleep with ten women and in the morning you feel guilty. <laughs> Who has asked them to go into this kind of a mess? And then to come and sit down and cry, oh, I'm so guilty, I've done so wrong and so wrong. That's why I have to talk about it, that this center is very important also because it is the sister of Sri Krishna, Vishnu Maya, who rules it. The relationship between brother and sister is absolutely gone haywire in this country, in all the Western countries. For us Indians, we do not understand. Really, we cannot understand. And we cannot explain what it is. The other day only, we had a very interesting talk because two Indians have come with me, very, very great Sahaja Yogis there. They said, Mother, why did you say, why did they say that a girl cannot hold the hand of a girl? I said, you won't understand. He said, no, no, but we would like to know. You mean to say we should close all our uh, schools, uh, girls' schools in India? I mean, a girl will can easily hold the hand of a girl, is much better. I said, why? Uh, these people say, you see, it's rather difficult for you to understand. No, he said, but one thing I can't understand, that if a girl holds the hand of a man, is there, will, will, there, will, that, will that be a holier relationship? See the accent. They think, will it be holy to hold the hand of a man? It won't be. But a girl is a holy relationship. So this holy relationship is lost in the so-called ventures of the brains, you see. Like, you see, if you make a go and see in the zoo, if there's a wombek, it behaves like a wombek, see? If there's a monkey, it behaves like a monkey. If there's a tiger, it behaves like a tiger. But a human being, you put him in the zoo. You will see, he'll eat up all the fruits, he'll cut down all the trees, he'll go to the, all the depths of it, and he'll break his nose, he'll, he'll lose his ears, he'll spoil his eyes. He cannot sit quietly. You give him a tree, he'll eat the fruit, <laughs> he'll eat the seed, he'll have the bark inside himself, he'll have all the roots inside himself, he'll do whatever is possible. It's so horrid with this brain, the way it is moving all the time in this direction, that direction, that direction. It wants to bang on all the sides. For what? It cannot sit right. You see, when it is sitting, for five minutes, it thinks it's a jail, it's boring. So he must go and do something very important. And what important thing is he does is to really ruin himself. He must go to a pub, he must go to a friend, he must go somewhere, he will really ruin himself, all his holiness and all his sense of self-esteem. That's why we have no sense as to what is a sister, the relationship of a sister with other women. This is so much missing that to talk about it in England was impossible. They said, this is a Victorian, even an earlier lady talking. See, they brand it. You are Victorian, you are Georgian, or you are... Anyway, everything moves according to the kings that rule that horrible England and the kings themselves being so horrible. <laughs> and the kings themselves were such horrible things. I mean, I don't know how they were ideas for them. So you are branded as a Georgian or this or a that. Whatever you say, you see, they cannot see the integration of anything. They just, one sentence they'll catch hold of, oh, this is absolutely Victorian. I said, all right, doesn't matter, but it's good, whether you like it or not. As if Victorian everything to be condemned, there must be something good about it also. This is how the whole outlook is of the people all the time trying to brand others. What about yourself? What brand are you going to give yourself? That's the point nobody wants to see. What brand am I? What is my brand? I am a brat. That's what you are. Sometimes I feel so many people, the way they think, they have no sense. Like in the night, a nocturnal animal would dash into that and that into that. That's how they have broken themselves completely like mad. For what? Keep quiet. Be in the center. You had to just wait. It was going to happen. This is your own. You are the people who are searching the truth for which it is all created. The whole scene is there. You have to just get it. Why are you breaking everything that 
God has given you. It's such a beautiful being He has created. You are the most beautiful person. Have you seen that when you go to the zoo, all the animals are looking at you? <laughs> In the same way, they are looking forward to you. What have you got to give to them? I don't know. <laughs> But once you get your realization. Then you know the meaning of your being. Then you know what you are, and this is what one has to establish. We have really done lots of wrongs to ourselves by not understanding really self-estimation. One must know that you are the diamond, that you are the spirit, that you have to rise into the kingdom of God. You are specially made for this purpose, and right. Right, royal people, you are that you have to climb up there. Instead of that, you are lost into your egos and super egos, and frantically, what you are doing is completely destroying all the chances of your ascent, which is so easily to be done. It's such a living force, which is going to work out. It is not going to harm you in any way. It is go. It is for you only. It's all there. It is sahaja. It is within you. It is spontaneous. and it is going to work out only thing you have to know that you have not to treat yourself so shabbily and with such hatred towards yourself there is no need to have such low opinion about yourself this is the left side the right side of course is of the people who who talk big you see who say uh this uh we say great politicians and things who just uh, talk down people when they speak they just dominate and by their speech they control people this is the center right side people have who are hot tempered and who lose temper and frighten people with their tempers you see they say such horrible things that people are just frightened of them and just to keep them quiet they manage some this type of people have the right we should be they also have when they have cold scoffs and all that is a balance comes to them when they have to talk too much also they have to have this problem of right we should they and sometimes some people suddenly lose their voices you see when they talk too much also they lose voices because the balance is created within them now the center one is that of shri krishna shri krishna is the one who creates the witness within us he is the one who refuted all kinds of formal ritualistic things in religion but he didn't become a hippie that's one thing one should understand that he didn't go to another extreme you see when he said that all these junks and formal things that are there he didn't say that you take to drugs another nonsensical formal thing he said that if you have to get over these things you have to see it as a drama the whole thing is a joke going on it's a drama going on but for that you have to become is not a question of your achieving it by rational thing you have to go beyond your mind to achieve it and that going beyond is done by the kundalini now he did not doing that does not mean that he was not in it he was very much there like a painting you have first you have the background then you have another color then you have your third color now the fourth color and now the time has come for the whole picture to be ready everybody has played their part very important part in our evolution everyone is needed among you may be many who might be having a problem with shri krishna especially hare rama hare krishna people they suffer mostly from throat cancers you can go and find out because they go against krishna by taking his name so vainly on oxford street they will stand with those things they get in the market put them here attach it here and go on dancing making mockery out of shri krishna's dignity like that and apart from that they take a name unauthorized who has given them authority to take the name of shri krishna they spoil this chakra doubly because if you take to mantras you spoil left we should be very bad all those who have taken this so called mantras have spoiled their left we should be because these mantras are not like one mantra to someone I mean, are we only one chakra part of the chakras, and that to like uh, thinga means this and all these things? How where are they within us? 
they ran, ran short of the names, I think, so they started getting a hold of any names that they felt like, or they were sinister to give such horrible names to you. Left we should you caste so badly. Mostly people who take to mantras, you will find when they speak, their lower jaw moves like this. They have difficulty in talking. They cannot talk properly. This is one of the things you will find with them. They will have pain in the left hand side. They will have pain at the back. This is the beginning of it. Any mantra given to you has to have logical meaning. It's a big science of mantra. It's not something nonsensical that you come here, I give you a flower finished. It's a big science. You see how many deities there are. You must know where the problem is. It is like a kundalini rising in its living power. You know that here is the obstruction. And you want to get rid of that obstruction, then you say there the password and you pass through. When the kundalini has not started, what's the use of having a mantra? The kundalini is frozen down there and you are saying a mantra for a chakra. Now, it would be something like this, that I am frozen in England and I am saying a password for a bridge here. It is absurd because you are so naive about it. Our Indian modern people also who think they are very westernized and sophisticated, they also are equally naive. They don't want to read anything about scriptures. They are not translated in English. They do not know anything about mantra vidya. The mantra has to be connected with your development in a kundalini. Not only that, but it should relate to the movement of the kundalini. It should be given by a person who is a realized soul, jagrut, awakened. Mantra has to be awakened. And that in, you will find in Sahaja Yoga that it is such a temporary thing. For example, the Kundalini is stopping at this point. Now, what is the mantra of this point? Lord's Prayer. Or I forgive, to make it short. That's the weapon Christ has given us of forgiveness. At this point, which stops your thinking. But any dictum and Harry cannot do it. You have to have realization first. Then only because the Kundalini has re reached there, you know that it is stopping there, then you have to say that, all right, this is Lord's Prayer. You say Lord's Prayer, it opens up. What is the mantra over here? Is Allahu Akbar. You put these fingers out of this center. You put them here and say Allahu Akbar three times, it will open up. But you have to be a realized soul to begin with, or the one who is telling you has to be realized soul. There has to be some authority from God, not from theological college or anything. It's a mockery to get knowledge of God in theological college. I mean, you must enter into the kingdom of God to know what He is, what it is like, what is His whole vidya, His knowledge. Divine knowledge is very different from the knowledge you have. Have you ever known that this is Vishuddhi Chakra before? You have never known this before, it's not written anywhere. Some things had to be t told by me also, so this was left for me to be told. Now this chakra, of Vishuddhi chakra, gives you the witness state that Krishna has described, that you become the Sakshi. I would like you to also listen to my tape on Sri Krishna, which is very good. In, recently I spoke about him in a very... Uh, detailed manner about Gita also. We can have all these ta uh, tapes brought down here to Melbourne and listen to them, but only listening to them is of no use. It's no use. It will give you ideas and you'll start behaving again in a funny way. I do not want you to make the same pickle out of me as you have pickled out other people. Put it to practice. Because when I spoke in America, they were all taping me down. And everybody said, Mother, you should not allow them to tape because, you see, these are all writers and this and that and they will use your knowledge and spread the thing. I said, they will, what? Let them do it. After all, Kundalini, I have to awaken. They cannot do it. If they could do, I would be very happy to sit down. Let them do it. I'll be very happy. Anybody who says that, why should you? I said, very good. You come along here and do it. I'll be very happy to settle down because I, I gain nothing. What is my gain? Anybody who is willing to do it, I'll be very happy to retire, absolutely, because by God's grace, I'm a married woman and I'm very happily married. I have my own children and grandchildren. Why should I bother my head of going around the people traveling like this, 
yesterday in Sydney, here in Melbourne, today again go back to Sydney, then to India, why should I do it? For what? Only because I love, because I know it's my mission, I have to do it, I'm supposed to do it. This is the job I have. But if anybody else can do it, I'll be very happy for them to do it. Now, when it comes to all these awakening and all that, it's a thing that happens to it is a thing that moves within you and you have to feel the movement. It is not a blind lane where you just pay some money in the counter and say, now we enter into the blind lane and do what you like. Somebody says you jump, somebody says you do this and do that, nothing. Everything is logic. First, your Kundalini must arise. If it does not arise, I cannot give you a certificate. You cannot give a certificate. Nobody can give you a certificate. It's nothing artificial. So in America, when I went and told them and they had tape recorders and all that, Something bad has also come out of it because it's a born again. All these things have come from there, only from my lectures. Because I told the Christians when they called me, thinking me to be Christian in the, in the churches, you see, they thought this is bona fide because I was baptized according to them. So I should be baptized by these people. So I'm all right. I was bona fide. They called me in the churches. And they also collected a collection for me. Very interesting. But the <laughs> best part of it, some of them got up certain words. I said, you are to be born again, you are to be born again. So they have got a now cult called born again. Finished. <laughs> it's very difficult to talk to these mad people. Anything you tell them, they make a cult out of it. Anything you do, they want to pickle out. You see, it's such a difficult thing with human beings. They don't want to take to reality. They want to have their ego everywhere asserting by which they pluck out all that is living and make that dead ugly and say, this is mine, this is mine, this is mine. It's absurd. But this is what happens to us. Now about Christ, I think the greatest message of Christ is his resurrection. This is resurrection. That he showed what Krishna has said in his lifetime that the spirit doesn't die, it cannot be killed, it cannot be blown out, it has to rise and it rises. Whatever you may try, it is eternal and that's what Christ has proved by his resurrection. But by his resurrection he's achieved a great thing which Hindus do not know and the Christians have not carried the message because they also do not know. The greatest thing that he has done to our awareness is that, that if you pass through that center, your karmas are sucked, your sins are forgiven. This is the beauty he has created within us, by which our ego is sucked in self, he sucks our ego, he is the sucker of our ego. But all the Christian nations are the greatest ego-oriented people. It's very difficult to talk to them. First thing they will do is to box your nose if not crucify you. They are extremely aggressive people, extremely aggressive and very ignorant. They are so naive, so naive. In India, it's not so difficult to talk to them because they know what is knowledge. I mean, they know what is Kundalini. They know. They know what is rising of the Kundalini. They know who can do this. It's not difficult to talk to them, but the people are so naive in spiritual life. And then they are so ego-oriented, despite the fact that Christ is the one who is the sucker of your ego. He is the one who sucks your ego, so there is no karmas after realization. You become the spirit. Spirit does not have any karmas, it's a myth, which is sucked. And this is what Christ has done for us. So when Christians so-called came to India, they converted people in such a crude method by putting a loaf in the well, if the poor Indians <laughs> said that they were naive as far as the Christianity was concerned, they said, this was the meat of the cows, you are all finished, you are Christians. So the whole village became Christians. Like that they tried all dirty tricks on Indians and they all became Christians. So Christ Indian Christians are the worst of all. <laughs> poor things, they think they are so condemned forever, now they can never be reconverted or they can never be realized, they cannot be resurrected, they are doomed people who have eaten the cow's meat, not they but their forefathers might. It is such a wretched state. 
but if any realized soul had come they would have seen that this is what christ was supposed to do which is written in the devi bhagavat that he is the support of the universe but the narrow visions of christians and the narrow visions of hindus and the narrow visions of muslims have made such a mess that the time has come to get the whole picture the complete integration of all these great incarnations who are within you and to understand them in reality what they are and becoming yourself such a wider personality as a collective being about christ i don't know i must have spoke, spoken hours and hours about krishna i must have spoken for hours to hours in england also we have about 300 to 400 tapes on different subjects which you should get and listen to that but again do not make it a big library for you please it is to be actualized it is to be felt it is to be practiced within yourself it is not for giving you any big knowledges we have a book called advent which is written by a french sahajogi which is a very beautiful book but we do not sell it to people who are not realized we do not because it is very difficult for a person who is not realized to bear the truth that's why they crucified christ that's why they tortured mohammed that's why they tortured all the saints because they could not bear the truth their ego could not bear it so we do not give those books to people who are not realized if you are realized then you can order for your copy you can get the book but you otherwise cannot get it i'm sorry we have certain experiences and we deal on those experiences that unless and until human beings are realized they are not going to value their divine life they value anything else but their divinity and here you do not pay a single pay so there is no binding force like many people say i said why are you still doing these things they said we have paid for it so let us go through it even it is hell you go through it that's the mentality now here there is nothing paid there's no attachment it's your freedom seeking which is the attachment if you are really a seeker you will go deep into it and have the blessings have the beauty of that spirit which is within you which you can have the time has come this was the time was promised is talked about in john john's revelation also in many of the indian scriptures it is described the best is william blake who has described it very beautifully in his book called milton even the place where i lived first sare hills he has said the first beacons will be lit in sare hills he has also said where our ashram is that in the ruins of lambeth vale the foundations will be laid come to lambeth vale and he says that it will be a jerusalem one day england will be a jerusalem that's what he has said it's a very interesting book milton if you can get hold of it please read it it's all described it describes everything even the vibrations that her looms vibrate the sinews it's a jerusalem now because people come for sahaj yoga there are some very good muslims we have young people who just found in their own country that fundamentally start taking the rule and they are behaving in such a fanatic manner they thought that if god is such a fanatic nonsense then better give him up and they wanted to become communist and they had taken to communism to a point when one of them came down to london and somehow he happened to come to us where he got his realization after realization he knew that it is one extreme is fanaticism another extreme is denial of god god is there but in the center they went back he got 500 people realized who are muslims and now they come to london his mother wanted to go to makkah makkah is also according to us is a very great pilgrimage no doubt because mohammed sahab was really very great and he was the incarnation of the primordial master which can be proved on your kundalini all things that i am saying can be proved on your kundalini and you can see for yourself it's absolutely practical for you to see now when he came to his mother wanted to come go to makkah she told that now why do you want to go to makkah now makkah has shifted to london better go to london 
That's what it is. One has to realize that when we talk of anyone like Christ or Moses or Abraham or Muhammad or anyone, you should know they are all related to each other. While we are identified with one or the other, let us identify ourselves with all of them through understanding of Kundalini. You'll be amazed when the Kundalini rises. If somebody is a Muslim, he has to take the name of Nanaka. Otherwise, the Kundalini doesn't rise. All the fanatics have to give up their fanaticism before the Kundalini rises. And even if their Kundalini rises and gives them realization, they are again sucked back into their fanatic pouches. So all these things will only disappear, all these relative things will disappear as soon as you find your absolute, that is your spirit. About the spirit, I'm sorry I cannot talk in such a small time, but there's a very good tape on Satchidanand, is that is the spirit. And it's best is to listen to that, because I would do no honor to your spirit if I just finish it in two minutes or three minutes like that. It's a very wide subject, and very beautiful, most enjoyable to know about your own spirit, about yourself that truly you are, not this body, not this mind, not this ego, neither these conditionings and these all ideas you have, conceptions. You are what you are. Thank you very much. Now I'm going away to India on the 8th, and tomorrow there's a good program in Sydney. And 8th I'll be leaving, a, and then I'll be in India for a short time and going back to London. Maybe next year I'll be coming here. I would request you that you must attend your collective programs because the message of Sahaja Yoga is collectivity. If you take my photograph and meditate at home, after some time you'll find you'll lose vibrations, you will not grow. You have to grow collectively. It's very important uh, that all of you should grow together collectively. Collectiveness must be developed, otherwise you must work it out, how it works on others and how you cure others and how you help others is to be seen. Some people will be coming from Melbourne, uh, from Sydney to Melbourne in the beginning till you understand Sahaja Yoga and then they will go away. Of course, there is no money, nothing involved as you see. We have started in a very small way. Now, when next time I come, I'm sure Melbourne will be a seat of very good Sahaja Yogis, not doubting but understanding. Doubting doesn't give you much chance. You see, what is there to doubt is nothing but your ego is doubting something. There is nothing to doubt. Just come and see, this is a new university into which you have entered. You don't have to pay anything, that's all. Where you have to pay, you do not doubt and ask questions. I know, you go headlong. headlong. But here you are free, you have freedom to doubt. But do not pull it too fast because it will spoil your chances of realization. May God bless you.